So here we go. Um, I know that this has been a difficult unit. Um, we are getting very close to the end of it. There are basically two things that we still have to learn and then we're done. Okay? Um, so there's, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Once we're through stoichiometry, I don't think the rest of what we have to do for this year is going to be that bad for you guys. We're basically going to talk about acids and bases and solutions a little bit. Um, and that stuff you guys can handle because we're just doing the basics on, on all of that. Um, so, like I said, if you can get through the next week or week and a half, then I think it's pretty smooth sailing for the rest of the year after that. All right? So, again, sorry that I wasn't here this morning, but I will be here early for the rest of the week. So if you need to come in and ask for help, uh, because I would say out of all the things we have to cover in stoichiometry, this is probably, the limiting reactant part is probably the tricky, trickiest part, okay? Um, so just make sure you're paying attention here. We'll take, I'm thinking we're probably not going to get all the way through this today. Um, so we'll finish the notes on this tomorrow, and then I'll give you the rest of class tomorrow just to practice so that I can kind of be in here walking around and making sure that it's making sense, okay? Um, but I promise you, you will want to use your class time well for this one, okay? Do we have an EOC in here? No, we do not have an EOC in here. We do have a final in here, but we don't have an EOC. All right, so limiting reactants. Here's, here's the idea, okay? Let me just give you a big picture here before we get started. We talked about s'mores when we first started talking about stoichiometry, right? You guys remember that? All right, so let's say that you are, and, and I think I kind of gave you this scenario already, but um, we decided that the reaction for a s'more was um, one marshmallow plus, what did we say, two graham crackers, is that right? Because you need one on each side. Uh, plus, how many chocolate pieces did we decide? I can't remember. Was it four? Okay, four chocolate pieces. Uh, with heat, yeah, we have some chocolate lovers in here. With heat, right? Um, and that's going to produce a uh, s'more, which is an MM GC2. Actually, that should be G little c, sorry. Not that it matters all that much, but I'm trying to make it look like a chemical formula. CP4, okay? That's how you make one s'more. That's the recipe. Everybody with me on that? All right. So let's say at your house, you uh, just, you come home from school today and you decide, you know what, I'm going to make as many s'mores as I possibly can with the materials I have in my house. All right? Not sure exactly why you would do that. Well, yes, I am. S'mores are awesome, right? But let's say that that's, that's what you decide you're going to do, okay? And let's say in your house you have uh, I don't know, 50 marshmallows. Um, you have uh, 10 graham crackers. You have, um, I don't know, 100 chocolate pieces. All right? So those are the ingredients you have. Um, so just looking at the marshmallows, how many s'mores should I be able to make? Just looking at the marshmallows. 50, right? Can I make 50 s'mores, though? No, why not? Okay, I only have 10 graham crackers, and that's only enough to make five s'mores, right? Okay? So the s'mores right here, now how many, how many s'mores could I make with the chocolate pieces, by the way? You can do this math. 25, good. 100 divided by 4 is 25, right? So I need 4 for each s'more. So I could make 25, I could make 50 s'mores here. I could make 25 with this. But because I only have enough graham crackers to make five s'mores, guess how many s'mores I get to make? Five, okay? This is called my limiting reactant. It's the thing I run out of first that stops the reaction. Does that make sense? Okay, so you've got all your reactants, you're combining them together. They usually don't combine nice and neat like they are in the formula here, right? You don't normally have one marshmallow for every two graham crackers for every four chocolate pieces. Usually you have too much of one thing, not enough of something else, okay? Um, these two right here are called my excess reactants, okay? All of this is going to be in the notes, so you don't necessarily have to write this down. I'm just trying to give you a big picture here, right? 
So these two are my excess reactants, and this is my limiting reactant. This is the one that stops the reaction so that it can't go any further. Okay? That's basically what a limiting reactant is. The concept is not that hard. It's the working out of the, the problems that gets a little bit tricky sometimes. Okay, so reactants are seldom present in ratios equal to the mole ratio in the balanced equation. That's what we just talked about. Usually one of the reactants is used up first, and it limits how much of the product can be made. And limiting reactant problems, just so that we don't add something extra to the mix here, we're going to do gram to gram conversions, all right? So that's kind of the nice thing about these, I guess, is that you don't have to worry about gram to volume, you don't have to worry about gram to mole, you don't have to worry about particles or any of that stuff. This is just going to be grams of one thing to grams of something else, okay? Um, so that should hopefully help keep it a little bit more simple. Okay. So the limiting reactant is the substance that controls the quantity of product that can be formed, all right? The thing that you run out of first, that's the thing that determines how much of the product can we make, right? You only have 10 graham crackers, you can only make five s'mores, period. The excess reactants, again, are the ones that are not completely used up in the chemical reaction. So the marshmallows, we're going to have extra marshmallows left over, and we're going to have extra chocolate pieces left over. Can't really do anything with them if we're wanting to make a s'more, though, right? You can do something with them. You can eat marshmallows and chocolate by themselves if you want to, but, um, but you can't make a s'more out of it, okay? All right, so theoretical yield. Um, again, we've done calculations so far that just we've been assuming that the reaction happens perfectly, okay? That's not the case. In a real-world situation, uh, you're not going to get the theoretical yield, okay? The theoretical yield is the maximum. If everything about the reaction worked exactly the way that it was supposed to, that's the maximum amount of the product you should be able to make. that never works out the way that it's supposed to, okay? There's always reasons. Can you think of some reasons why maybe a chemical reaction, if we do it in a lab, maybe we wouldn't get all of the products that we should be able to? Okay, maybe. Now, if you measure a mass, then you should be able to figure out theoretically, right, because you, you work from mass to moles, do the mole ratio, work back to mass. So even though we're measuring, you know, on the balance and it's not perfect, if we, if we measured 10.2 grams or 10.25 grams, then we should be able to figure out theoretically here's exactly how much of the product we should be able to make, okay? But why, why don't we make that much of the product usually when we do a chemical reaction or ever? Uh, okay. Yeah, things happen in the lab, don't they? I mean, they've happened to us all year. You spill something, right? Or let's say that there's some sort of filtering that you have to do, right? Maybe some stuff gets caught on the filter paper that's not supposed to be caught on the filter paper. Or something when you pour from one beaker to another, something gets left in one beaker that's not supposed to be in that beaker, right? Anytime you do a transfer of any sort, you can lose some of your product, right? Or you can lose one of the reactants that would limit the amount of product that you can make, okay? So that's why... That's one of the big reasons that we're almost never, and I say almost never, we're never going to get the full amount, the theoretical yield, okay, in an actual lab experiment. All right, so now let's, uh, let's work one of these problems out. Identify the limiting reactant, excess reactant, and the theoretical yield of H3TO3 if 225 grams of PCL3 is mixed with 123 grams of water. Hmm. All right, this is still a stoichiometry problem. So what's the first thing we need? Balanced chemical equation, right? Well, we know what our reactants and our products are, right? But we need to write it in... Wait, is it already there for you guys? Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> not cool. All right, so there it is. Yeah, actually, I guess you couldn't write this one because you wouldn't know about the HCl. So, yeah, you would have to be given this one. 
I thought we were going to write it. Whoops. OK. So there's our balanced chemical equation, right? And what's different about this problem than the ones that we've been given so far? Let's just kind of look at this here. Oh, that's weird, isn't it? Well, OK, here's the thing. These are our two reactants, right? They're telling us how much of each of the reactants that we have. By the way, this is a big, big, big clue that this is a limiting reactant problem, OK? If you are given the amounts of two of the reactants, it's going to be a limiting reactant problem, all right? So you kind of need to just file that one away. Um, well, we want to know how much H3PO3 we can make. Problem is, we're probably going to run out of one of these before we run out of the other one, right? This is probably going to be like a s'mores situation where we have too much of one thing and not enough of the other. But how do we know which is which? Well, you don't until, until we actually figure it out, OK? Here's my recommendation. Now, there are, there are actually several different ways to do this, OK? I think this is the easiest way. It's also the longest way. It's the most labor intensive, OK? But this, this way seems to make the most sense to students most of the time, OK? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take these 225 grams of PCL3, and I'm going to work out that problem, and I'm going to figure out how much of the product I can make with that 225 grams. Okay? Then I'm going to do the exact same thing with the 123 grams of H2O. I'm going to figure out with that many grams of water, how much of the H3PO3 could I make? One of those numbers will be lower than the other. Okay? Which one is the correct answer? Well, I'll tell you what. Let's just work it out, and then we'll decide which one is the correct answer. Okay? So we've got 225 grams of PCL3. OK, we've got a balanced chemical equation. What's the second step in any stoichiometry problem? Get to moles. There should be more of you saying that. I still have people asking me about that step when they're coming in and working on practice problems. That should be the, the second thing that's in your brain with these stoichiometry problems is, I need to get to moles. Okay? Now, if you're already at moles, good. But this one, we're, we have grams, so we need to get to moles, right? So we're going to go from grams of PCL3 to moles of PCL3. Uh, phosphorus is what, 30 point? That's the whole thing. 35.3. OK, thank you. 137.333 is the molar mass of the PCL3. OK, from there, we're going to go from moles of PCL3 to moles of H3PO3. OK, so this is pretty standard stuff. This is what we've done before. What's the ratio there? One to one. Kind of a pointless step on this one. OK. Now, uh, I don't know. I think I'd rather you have that step in there. I was going to say maybe you could skip it, but I don't think that's a good idea. I think that's just inviting disaster. Okay, so then we're going to go from moles of H3PO3 to grams of whoops, H3PO3. And this one. Getting 81.9947. Yeah. 81.995. I'll round it to. All right. So there's our setup for the first one. Um, that's going to give me a number. Hundred and thirty four. That are right now, yeah, that's the right number six fake. So 134. Well, here I'll do this. If all of this PCL3 reacted, it would give me 134 grams of the H3PO3. Okay. So we figure that one out. Now we got to figure the other one out. 
we have 123 grams of water, the moles of water, 18.0148, and that number is just, that's the molar mass of water, which we've done many, many times, so I'm skipping over that kind of quickly. We're going to go to moles of H3PO3 this time, again. Okay, so this time it's not a pointless step, because there's one mole of H3PO3, three moles of H2O. Then we're going to go from moles of H3PO3 back to grams. And um, pay attention when you're doing this. Don't, don't do your work twice, right? You already figured out the molar mass of H3PO3 up here, right? So you're going to use the same number down here, 81.995. All right, let's work that one out. One eighty seven. Okay, good. So if all hundred and twenty three grams of H two O reacted, we would end up with hundred and eighty seven grams of the H three PO three. Now, remember back to our s'mores example. How many s'mores could I make with just the marshmallows? 50. Okay. How many could I make with the graham crackers? Five. So how many s'mores could I actually make? Five. Only five, right? Okay. So same thing here, right? If I react all this PCL3, I can make 134 grams of the product. If I react all this water, I can make 187 grams of the product. How much of the product can I actually make here? Only 134, right? Because as soon as this runs out, the reaction stops. Okay? Does that make sense? Everybody following that? So that, yeah, you just pick the smaller of the two numbers. Okay? Does that make sense? Now, we also have to identify the limiting reactant here. The limiting reactant is the PCL3, right? That's the one that runs out first. Does that make sense? Because it's the one that makes less of the product. So then the H2O is our excess. Okay, so this is limiting. H2O is our excess, and this is how much of the product we can make. Okay, theoretical yield is this. Okay, uh, we're just going to refer to it as theoretical yield from now on. It's basically the number we've been calculating all along. But remember, I just told you, is this how much, if we did this lab, if we did this reaction in the lab, would we get 134 grams out of it? No, right? Because we never, we're never going to get the theoretical yield, okay? That's just, in theory, that's how much we should be able to get. Okay, we're going to stop there for today. I think that's a good stopping point. We'll finish this up tomorrow and then do a lot of practice on this, okay?